welcome welcome to vayu shastra's future scientist meet so thank you for supporting us this is the 15th uh, uh, live so again as we said the people you the students you see here having this potential to change the future of humanity they can take humanity to next level because that the research they do the topics they present every week i i my i i haven't done till my college level so even in my masters i started doing it only in my final year ug like that now we have students from grade 4 grade 5 or grade 9 having their own company having their own team and they talk about uh, uh topics like uh, black holes they create their own theories so for me it's like it's like amazing i love uh, to see this kind of transformation from students and this is uh, what vayu shastra does vayu shastra is an iit incubator startup to spread the awareness of aeronautics and aerospace among school children uh, we are incubated and funded by iit madras and our offices uh, inside iit madras research park and we till now we reach more than 40000 students through our online programs offline programs so we basically teach aeronautics and aerospace using storytelling so this initiative is the product of something called trigger the spark so i did a research about life of elon musk life of right brothers life of abdul kalam when you take a life of elon musk he was crazy about games that to space games when he was 8 to 10 years old he ended up uh, making his own game when you take right brothers when he was 8 years old his father bought one toy for him bought one toy that moment triggered the spark for abdul kalam when he was 12 years old his teacher told him a story about birds that moment that triggered the spark so we decided to create a program which is similar to that sir we make stories we make small small uh, paper models we mix lot of science so and it has 8 to 9 levels after 9th level we found the students transformed to next level like they they started presenting their own topics they started doing lot of research so i thought why don't we create one community of namaskar uh, jaku namaskar <laughs> i thought i thought why don't we create one community of students called young researchers namaskar jaku i i thought why don't we create one uh, community of students uh, who can uh, take humanity to the next level so from there we started doing uh, we were not going in live for past one year uh, this this live started only i think two months back before that we used to randomly uh, meet every week 7:30 to 8:30 we used to discuss the student used to present it was like that so accidentally one day i went on live then it become like uh, Like every we started reaching out to people all over the world. So every session of Vayu Shastra had this thirty-five percent of worldwide reach. See, when student does some research, he does he presents something. It has a worldwide reach. So that's what uh, that that yeah. So that's I felt that's good. And suddenly one day one as uh, one scientist from another country jumped in. We have one scientist from NASA. So I thought, wow. So it, this is making some difference. Then I started seeing the results. then there's a student started writing her own book student registering his own company so like a lot of things happen so i love to see a lot of more things and today we have five future scientists here uh so five talents ranadeep kirtana naman sanjana and bairav who hold heavy potential i see them as a potential uh, potential people who can take me to next level so our first presenter of the day is ranadeep reddy so ranadeep reddy uh, he is from apollo isha vidyaniketan and he is studying grade 9 and if you if you uh, ask what is his topic you might have uh, heard about gold mining diamond mining or even coal mining have you heard asteroid mining yes his topic is asteroid mining so i'll little give intro about asteroid mining 
to stay the earth asteroid mining is mandatory i guess in future why do why do we keep destroying the earth instead let's uh, extract resource from outer space that's asteroid asteroid uh, asteroids are like treasure hunts okay uh, over to you ranadeep please sir the stage is all yours sir can you enable yes. screen share yes is my screen visible yes yes yeah namaskar and to all my name is randeep i'm studying in apollo isha vidyaniketam today i'm going to present a topic asteroid mining contents of this presentation introduction what is meant by asteroid types of asteroids what is meant by asteroid mining how do we mine a asteroid advantages of asteroid mining disadvantages of asteroid mining and conclusion so introduction the things like mobile phones computers and laptops etc are made of made up of few precious materials with names like terbium neodymium or tantalum we get these materials from ground into these things mining industry gets these materials from ground mining industries are responsible for air and water pollution and the destruction of entire landscapes dangerous chemicals like cyanide sulfuric acid or chlorine are used to extract these resources harming biodiversity workers and locals there is a concept that could replace the mining industry on earth with a clean process that can't harm anyone asteroid mining so before going to what is meant by asteroid mining we will know about it, what is meant by asteroid asteroids are millions of cloud that became a planet 4.5 billion years ago most of them are located in the main asteroid belt a region between the orbits of mars and jupiter asteroids that come close to it are called near earth objects types of asteroids c type the asteroids this asteroids consists of clay and silicate rocks and are dark in appearance s type these asteroids are made up of silicate materials and nickel iron m type these asteroids are metallic what is asteroid mining asteroid mining is a hypothetical exploitation of materials from asteroids and other minor planets including near earth orbits the near earth object how do we mine an asteroid the basic idea to is to choose an asteroid move it to a place where it is easy to process and then take it apart to turn into useful products unfortunately all of this collides with fundamental problems humans had to solve going to space is expensive it costs thousands of dollars in rocket fuel for each kilogram just to reach a low earth orbit going further out into deep space costs thousands more we need cheaper space travel to make asteroid mining profitable one solution is to switch from classical rockets to electric spaceships we already use electrical rocket engines for many of the space probes on science missions in principle we only need to build bigger ones while electrical engines are not powerful enough to fly to space they require only a tiny amount of fuel to go very far once they are in space this means we don't need to spend a lot of money on this doesn't solve the whole cost problem but it makes it easier to start our first mission now that we have an electric asteroid mining spaceship we need to find the right asteroid and get it there we have already successfully visited asteroids with space probes and even collected samples still to make it easier and cheaper our first targets will probably be near earth asteroids asteroids that orbit near earth after a few months of travel our spaceship finally arrives at an asteroid the first thing that needs to be done is to secure the asteroid and stop it from spinning there are multiple ways of do this to do this like vaporizing material with a laser or stopping the rotation with thrusters once we have a stable asteroid we need to wait orbital mechanics are complicated but if you push something in the right direction at right exactly the right moment you can move very big things with very little force so we wait for exactly the right moment our ship fires its 
thrusters and nudges the asteroid into a trajectory that takes it near our moon. The moon is useful because we can borrow its gravitational pull to put the asteroid in a stable orbit around it, which saves even more fuel. Again, the again the trip takes months. Another spaceship will be launched from Earth to the orbit, which is the first mining and processing equipment, and moves carefully towards the asteroid. The processor works very differently than on Earth. Giant mirrors focus sunlight and heat up the asteroid rock to boil out the gases. Grinders break up the dried rocks into gravel and dust, dust and centrifuges separate dense from light elements. Even if we only extract 0.01% of asteroid's mass in precious metals, this is still several times more than you would get from the same number of ore on the ground. But what now? How do we get our precious metals safely back to ground? There are few ways, like loading it into reusable rockets then that return to Earth from space. Or if you, our processor contains 3D printers, we can print a faster and cheaper delivery system. Heat shielded capsules filled with gas bubbles. This can just be dropped into oceans where ships tow them away. Advantages: This can reduce pollution on Earth. If we mine a 16 Psyche asteroid, it's enough iron nickel to cover the world's metal needs for millions of years. If we are colonizing a planet or a moon, we can use the materials from asteroids to build or do something on the planet or moon. Disadvantages. At current market prices, the rare raw materials alone would be worth quadrillions of dollars. Well, not real, but technically, for example, there are more than 20 million tons of gold in the ocean's water, worth roughly 750 trillion US dollars. But filtering out the gold would be so expensive that you would lose money selling it. Right now, asteroid mining has exactly this problem. It's too expensive to replace mining on it. Billions of dollars worth of valuable resources in space are worthless, worthless, worthless if it costs trillions to get them. So conclusion. This could be the starting point of humanity's first real steps towards colonizing this solar system. The first mining operation makes the second one easier, and so on, while the space industry grows and precious materials become cheaper. Eventually, we could stop mining on it. Even the idea of toxic mining down here might be become something weird. None of this is science fiction. We don't need fancy materials or new physics to make asteroid mining happen. We can do, make it happen today. A small asteroid contains trillions of worth materials like platinum, platinum, iron nickels, and gold, etc. I also have another thing to tell. Last week, I presented the topic space elevator, and there was a question that how do we get the raw material for 36,000 kilometer long tether? Astro mining could be the answer. Thank you. Any questions? Wow, 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 I'm just amazed. Brilliant. See, last week he presented on space elevator. It, it, uh, there are a lot of questions about the topic. And there is an answer it came from this week's uh, research. A student, if you have any questions, you can just raise your hands. I can unmute uh, yourself. Do you have a, do you, do we have a quiz? Yes, sir. Oh, nice. Okay, quiz is also there. So, students, uh, till you join in a quiz, you can ask your doubts in chat box. So. Because this is a, this is one of the advanced topics. I think most of you might have interested in us, asteroid mining as well. Yes. And we can post the link uh, here. This link. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Double. Double, sir. <laughs> so asteroid mine. See, he mentioned only 16 asteroids. If you find 16 asteroids, that is good enough to cover Earth's uh, need of all this nickel and all these things, these materials. So why do we destroy Earth? Instead, let's mine asteroids and save Earth. No? Jago, I have posted. The okay, link. the quiz link is up. So oh, I have disabled for all the everyone. Okay, quiz link is there. I'll put it in YouTube live as well. Okay, so I can share screen. I'll, uh, 
So let's look at the and see how many people are joining. Oh, okay. Thirteen people joined. I think we can. Someone make... joined with smileys. Who is that? I think there's one more smiley. Smiley here. That that smiley must be this smiley. <laughs> okay, let it be. Let it be. Satyaki, can you post the link in the uh, Isha group? I think we can wait for okay. Who are joined right now has this uh, link here. This link. I think we can start. 13. 13 is a good number. Okay. I think it's a time to press. 30 seconds. Which type of asteroid consists of clay? And silica rocks. Yes, type A type, C S type, C type. If you focused on the presentation, you might be able to answer. Next question. Oh, Which type of asteroid are metallic? Nickel and iron. S type, N type, M type, and C type. Three, two, one, ta -da. MR three is leading. By yes. really, uh, yes, sixty point <laughs> chasing. Most of the asteroid located near dash belt. Fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. Let's see the Twenty seconds. Most of the asteroids located near the asteroid. None of them are Six, five, four, three, two. None of them are answering. Time up. Nice. Famous trees. Famous trees, by Four of them. Yes. Better answer. Better answer. The asteroid belt is located near the orbits of dash and dash planets. Jupiter and Nenus, Mars and Jupiter, Jaraton and Jupiter, no. I think because uh, they happy to be smiley fellow. He is the smiley fellow. Three, two, one, two. Emma's tree, by the way, Anish is raising up. Adrit is following. Nice. Asteroids that came close to Earth are called. I got a spell mistake here. Okay, nice for that.
Two question view. Let's see the answers. Fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. That's why that came close to it. Oh. Hey, you are the dean of the Hey, you are the Antia. Only one answered correctly. Near the asteroids. Question every Aranadip's question has the answer. So if you read it correctly, you can easily able to answer. So you got it right. <laughs> Okay. Giant mirrors focus sunlight and heat up asteroid rock too. Giant mirrors focus sunlight for light purpose. Boil out gases to make easier to mine. Turn up the above. Link, please. Huh? Okay. Which break up the dried rock into travel and dust, centrifuges separate dens from light elements. Which digger shovel grind on the which, which breaks up the Dried rocks into gravel and dust. Yuga is Yuga. Yeah, Yuga. <laughs> Sama lead in Egi. Name anyone precious metal. The names which are in the presentation. Yeah, he, he mentioned uh, yeah, some five to six elements he mentioned. More than that, actually. You guys, you got finally no one answered correctly. Oh, yeah, I think I might have uh, now. Where were the materials name good for that? So, I'm not sure about it. I saw much. Yuga first place, chemistry second, Naman third. Garland. Screen door. Yuga, Hemastri. Naman. Sir, allow everyone to speak. Huh? Oh, there are messages. Yes, I allow everyone to speak. I yes. didn't really see the presentation, but I just joined. And uh, yeah, the last interview, I'm not sure. Yeah. That's right. Please, please. No, don't, sure. feel, uh, don't think I'm not interested. I just couldn't <laughs> see your presentation. Well, it's a very neat presentation. Now you see that. Clean. I, I'll see the live stream because I have exams. I have to prepare for exams, which are starting okay. from next month, the first week of next month. No, week I also month. have an exam. It's very important. That's why I had to study because of frame, and then I had also gone out. Work. Well done, well done, students. So, if you have any doubts, questions about uh, Ranadeep's presentation, you can ask him, message him, mail him. Uh, so, Ranadeep can, so can I put my mail in the chat box? Yeah, yeah, please. So, I have Google, Google form. form. Yeah, Google form. Yeah, just give your feedbacks to 
uh, in Madhip, so it will help him to uh, do it better. Okay. Well done, Ranaji. Uh, like uh, all of you, go unmute. Let's give a huge round of applause for Ranaji. Amazing presentation. Thank you. Amazing, and, uh, amazing. Uh, uh, do share your feedback in the uh, YouTube live stream. YouTube live, yes. Sir. Yes, yes. So that's uh, we keep we make it as a habit because this chat box, whatever you are typing here, won't be visible in the live. So once we look at back, maybe after ten years. When you become a big scientist, you want to uh, go through your previous presentations. That time you'll get on feel. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, well done. I want, well done. I want to give my feedback as I don't know what really happened. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. So please don't expect a feedback from me. Okay, Randeep. <laughs> but yeah, if you post this link in WhatsApp, I'll watch your presentation later on, and I will give you my feedback. Okay. Okay. Nice. Thank you, Ranadeep. Let's welcome our next presenter, next researcher, next person, next future scientist who has this capacity to change the future of humanity. That's Kirtana. She is grade nine student from Misha Vidya Matriculation High Secondary School, and she has a unique topic. In which state? Yes. Okay. So, she is going to present on this topic about agriculture and farmers. Okay, let's see what, uh, what she is uh, having. Oh, yes, Kirtana, you can start. Kirtana, your voice is very low. Your voice is very low. You can remove your headphone if you are wearing. No, I was not uh, hearing no, it. No, it's audible. Yeah, Jaku. Yeah, Namaskaram to all and my name is J.R. Ketna. Today my topic is about agriculture and farmers. Loading, loading. Presentation is loading. Is my screen visible? Mm, not yet. I can see a dark screen. Ethan, I can share your presentation yeah. in the WhatsApp group. So one of us can share it. Yeah, Jagu. Ah, we can see now. We can see now. It's visible. You are muted. Oh, unmute yourself. Yeah, now unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah Jago, I can unmute. Yeah. yeah, first let me start my uh, presentation. Yeah, this is my presentation on the agriculture and the farmers. And in this presentation, we are going to learn about who is a farmer, what does a farmer do in agriculture land, what reason a farmers get suicide, why are farmers very important, greatest and richest farmers in the world, what is known as agriculture or farmland, which country had richest farmer. Yeah, anyone know these answers? Let you all can uh, answer my starting questions. Who are all uh, in the YouTube live? They can type the answers in live chat. Yes, so students, if you know like any of these, if you want to comment on any of the questions, you can just put it in chat box. You can start, Kitana, so let me help. 
Yeah, Jagu. I'm tracking the chat box. Anyway. Yeah, first we are going to see about the farmers. A farmer is a person engaged in agriculture, raising, raising living organisms for food or raw materials. The term usually applies to people who do some combination of raising field crops, orchards, vineyards, poultry, or other livestock. And uh, let's see about why are farmers important? Farmers have great importance in our society. They are the ones who provide us food. Since every person needs proper food and they are living, so they are a necessary for the society. There are many other farmers who grow crops of other tribes. So we see for, for if we need food for eating the for, the farmers are very important for our life for this food and they are uh, cropping very crops in the agriculture lands and then we are going to see about that also yeah, and then let me go next what is the job of farmer a farmer manages farms ranches greenhouses nurseries and other agricultural production organizations. Farmers are involved in cultivating, performing post harvest duties, overseeing livestock and supervising farm labor depending on the type of farm. What do farmers do daily? In a single day, the farmers conduct an orchestra of activities, harvesting, hoeing, planting, working with children and preparing the weekly CSA pickups. What do farmers do daily? Oh, it was a mistake. So let us go on another topic. Yeah. Do you know what is a female farmer called? Farmers are male and farmers are female. And what clothes do farmers wear? At any given time, the farmer's hub's coat has pieces of cow pop, mud, oil, grease, and then more mud on it. That's why farmers wear cotton duck coats that have thin lining, steady zippers, and can be thrown in the wash. Probably the most important part of any farmer's outfit is the shoe or boots in our case. What is the full meaning of a farmer? The definition of a farmer is a person who owns, works on or operates an agricultural enterprise either com commercially or the sustain himself or his family. A person who earns a living by farming ESP, one who manages or owns farm. Now let's see about who is the greatest farmer in the world. Following on with our top 5 series of articles, here is the top 5 richest farmers in the world. Liu Yongxing he is in China, 6.6 .6 billion dollars and Liu Yonghao, China, 4.6 billion dollars. Steward and Linda Resnick, 4 billion dollars, he is in USA. Prince Sultan bin Mahmud bin Salt Hal Kabir, $3.8 billion in Saudi. Harry Stein, $3.5 billion in USA. These are the top uh, five richest farmers in the world. And which country has rich farmers? Brazil. Brazil is historically one of the best agricultural countries on which its economy based around 41% of the total land of agriculture occupied in Brazil. It has an entire land of 2.1 billion acres and the area occupied by farming is almost 867.4 billion acres in Brazil. Who is a famous farmer? Joel Salatin is known around most agricultural circles as the most famous farmer in the world and is the 
Pavyar and own owner of Polyface Farms in Swipe, Virginia. And this topic is why are the farmers getting suicide? Farmer suicide in India refers to the national catastrophe of farmers committing suicide since the 1970s often by drinking pesticides due to their inability to repay loans mostly taken from private landlords and banks. The National Crime Records Bureau of India reported that a total of 296438 Indian farmers had committed suicide since 1995. Out of these, 60,750 farmers' suicides were in the state of Maharashtra since 1995 and the remaining in Odisha, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat and Chhattisgarh. All states with loose financial and entry regulations. Earlier reported varying figures from 5,650 former suicides in 2014 to the highest number of former suicides in 2004 of 18,241. The former suicide rate in India had ranged between 1.4 and 1.8 per 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, total population over a 10 year period through 2005. However, the figures in 2017 and 2018 showed an average arm of more than 10 suicides daily. There are accusations of states manipulating the date on former suicides, hence the real figures could be even higher. India is an agrarian country with around 70 percentage 70% of its people depending directly or indirectly upon agriculture. Agriculture had 15.4 percentage share in economy of India in year 2017. Around 41.49 percentage of total labor are associated with agriculture in year 2020. Former suicides account for level 11.2 level percentage of all suicides in India. Activities and scholars have offered a number of conflicting reasons for former for for government policies, corruption in subsides, subsidies, health, personal issues, and family problems. The expressed reasons in order of importance behind former suicides were debt, alcohol addiction, environment, low produce prices stress and family resp responsibilities, apathy, poor irrigation, increased cost, cost of cultivation, private money lenders, use of chemical fertilizers and crop fails. Failure of crops 16.84% Failure of bore wells 0.88% Family problems with spouse others 13.27 percentage. Now let's see the topic on agriculture. Agriculture is the practice of cultivating plants and livestock. Agriculture was the key development in the rise of sedentary human civilization, whereby farming of domesticated spices created food surpluses that enabled people to live in cities. The history of agricultural behinds thousands of years ago. There are two types of agriculture. Agriculture is divided into two different Let's explore and learn about these two types of agriculture. What is agriculture? Explain. 
Agriculture is the process of producing food, feed, fiber and many other desired products by the cultivation of certain plants and the raising of domesticated animals. The operations generally attempt to maximize financial income from grain produce or livestock. Agriculture plays a chiefly role in economy as well as it is considered to be the backbone of economic system for developing countries. For decades, agriculture has been related with the production of virtual crop, food crops. The present, day, present era of farming contains dairy, fruit, forestry, poultry, beekeeping and arbitrary and arbitrary etc now let's see about what is industrial or agriculture industrial agriculture is the large scale intensive production of crops and animals often involving chemical fertilizers on crop or the routine harmful use of antibiotics in animals as a way to compensate for filthy conditions even when the animals are not sick what is subsistence agriculture subsistence farming is a form of production in which nearly all crop or livestock are raised to sustain the farm family and rarely producing surpluses to sell for cash or stone for later use, primitive farming tools and applies minim minimal or no inputs to increase crop yield and productivity. Subsistence agriculture occurs when farmers grow food crops to meet the needs of themselves and their families of small holdings. Subsistence agriculturists target farm output for survival and for mostly lo local requirements with little or no surplus. What kind of acti activity is agriculture? Agriculture is a primary activity. It includes growing crops, fruits, vegetables, flowers and rearing of livestock in the world. 50% of persons are engaged in agricultural activity. Two-thirds of India's population is still dependent on agriculture. What are all the three types of agricultural lands? Agricultural lands consist of three main types. Arable land including crop land and fallows, land under permanent crops and pastures and hay fleets. Agricultural land. Agricultural land is typically land devoted to agriculture. The systematic and controlled use of other forms of life, particularly the rearing of livestock and production of crops. To produce food for humans, it is generally synonymous with both farmland or cropland as well as pasture or rangeland. And thank you, my presentation was ended. I think that you learned some about farmers and agriculture. And this is quiz day. If anyone have uh, any questions, you can ask now. Okay. Question time, quiz time. Uh, I thought that after seeing the topic, I thought something related to space farming. <laughs> nice, actually. Like, actually, you did uh, so much work. How much? Uh, how many days it took for you to make this? Okay. Mm -hmm. Jago, I started uh, today 2.30 and I completed uh, 6.30. Nice, nice, nice. Girl. There's so much details in it. Well done, well done. Okay, so there are some questions. Uh, yes, Hema Sri, you can ask a question. Jago, every farmer is great, Bio, but only, uh, she said, but if five farmers are great farmers, why like that? And why they are f famous? Give them a unit answer. I think she, uh, after her answer, I'll tell. Give them a, he's asking. She's asking. Yeah. Why there are like only, if you look at the great farmers, huh? 
இல்ல தேர் ஆர் மெனி ஃபார்மர்ஸ் லைக் திஸ் பட் தே ஆர் தி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ரிச்சஸ்ட் ஃபார்மர்ஸ் சோ ஐ திங்க் தி ஆஸ் பர் மணி ஆர் ஆஸ் பர் ப்ரொடக்ஷன் ப்ரொடக்ஷன் மணி போத் ப்ரொடக்ஷன் அண்ட் மணி so i think it's based on some articles published uh, the articles may have missed uh, maybe few um, okay avinash you can ask your question yeah that i knew that this is not going to be related to space and i also knew this is related to geography and yeah. i but the only thing i never knew was it would be related to eighth standard geography yeah i think she got most of the information except for the richest right. farmers right. and then farmers committing suicide from the eighth standard textbook am i correct yeah okay nice and because i knew i know the eighth standard portions from the back uh, like the uh, back of my farm the subsistence <laughs> farming was there i remember it very well so yeah but otherwise also the presentation was good it was like a geography class but yeah it was still very good good job yeah you got it you high instead of highlighting space you are highlighting the present conditions of indian farmers this can so i have a like a challenge a small challenge why don't you try and find a solution for all these farmers suicides why don't you find find a solution yeah i can try okay if you That's find a solution good. try to present it next month so try that i'm sure it will be great if it is good try to present it with other farming uh, not with farmers try with other officials as well and then slowly spread this idea spread this idea with other people and then slowly let others know let them spread it with farmers let all the farmers in india know your solution and then if they follow it it should be in such a way that they don't get affected at all they should have insu- they should be able to get like insurance for any destruction that happens any uh, unwanted uh, not unwanted unknown unknowingly done destruction happens they should be able to get compensation they should be insured so yeah try to create a solution that prevents these farmers from uh, from you know killing themselves by taking pesticides or by hanging on trees try to find a solution and then start spreading it with the uh, with the help of experts verify it with experts and then do it if you do it without verifying then i'm not sure it'll go anywhere but verify it with those experts you know then i'm sure with all the corrections you will be able to everyone will be uh, you will be able to spread it to others uh, properly and then others will get to know what is your view on preventing all these suicides okay so if you do this it's the, it's beneficial for farmers and then other people around india around the world know about your solution against suicidal uh, suicidal farmers farmers who are going to kill themselves so yeah that's all i've got to say but it's very good good job so there is a very good emotional connect to this presentation uh, okay darsh had a question yeah darsh you can unmute yourself sir i no question sir Okay, okay. I saw you raised your hand. Okay, then. No, sir, I'm a mistake. Kavi, Kavi, you can ask the question. Sir, I have a question. Yeah. Which Indian state produces the largest quantity of pulse? Which Indian state produces the largest quantity of pulse? Who can have, answer? And I have one more question. Yes. Which of the following is the commercial crop in India? Okay. Jagat won the first question. So you can put the post the quiz link as well. Yeah, Jagu. <coughs> What does Amina said is uh, like a hundred percent true. now we know this is the problem this is the problem statement uh, why don't we come up with uh, innovative solutions now let's let's start finding some innovative solutions we are waiting okay naman 
great one even though it's not related to space it's a great one yes nice yes namad that's the comment from jaga i had shared my quiz link okay you shared it to me let me share it to everyone okay you also share yeah, everyone i shared nice nice you can share your screen so students you can join the quiz and uh, sanjana is the next presenter just be ready after the quiz you can Is it Nash? You can unmute yourself. So we please have nine. Start. Please don't start. Please just a minute. I'll join right now. I my mom called me. Just a minute. Okay. Please don't start. I'll join right now. No issue. Twelve people join. So someone put it in Isha group as well, so that the students will join. Fourteen people join. Fifteen. Kavya, Abhirat, Rajakumari, that's fourteen. Fourteen. No, no, don't start. Wait. So, or. Uh, I mean, I join. Check. Who can join? Manta. Yep. Okay, he joined. I think we have out of twenty-one, we have sixteen join. Uh, so I think one or two. Okay, I think we can start. We can start. Yeah, Jagu. <laughs> You can read out the question, Kirtan. I can read out the question for the audience. Farmers are the ones who provide us. And the second question is: In a single day, the farmers conduct an of activities artika armeli orchestra armista from jilebi pitchified names artika armeli orchestra armista sounds like some song also some harris jarad song namahaviya vahiya what are the types of agriculture Industrial agriculture, industry agriculture, industrialized agriculture, subsistence agriculture. No, no. Industrial, industry, industrialized. No. <laughs> Next question. Agriculture has share in economy of India in a year. Two thousand seventeen, fifteen point four percent. Nineteen point zero, twenty twenty. Twenty point five, nineteen seventy eight. All are crystal questions only. How many percentage of crops fail? Forty twenty, not eight not eight, sixteen point eight four, ten point zero seven. And industry agriculture is the intensive production, intercale production, large scale production, small scale production. This is kind of decent. Agriculture is secondary activity, primitive activity, primary activity, local activity. Subsistence agriculture target from output for survival, output for rendering, output for rendering, output for rendering. Okay, the words are different. My tongue is rolling after seeing these words. Fine. What are the three types of agricultural land? Scroll down. Scroll down. I want to read the ninth question. Okay. 
Let me go to leaderboard, Jagu. Ninth, ninth question. Wait, I'm reading the ninth question because I'm curious to read the answers. The four options. No options, Jagu. That is fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks. What are three types of agriculture land? Now go to leaderboard. Yeah, Jagu. I think she must be the fan of Tesla. She has nine questions. I already took her the session about Tesla. Ah, 14-14. Avinash is leading. 130 points. Chased by Anish Noel. Then we have 11% WXWX. That's 590. Aishwarya is for Bhairavi. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Adrit is answering, I guess. Adrit, complete Pandya should. Ashtri is answering, I mean. So, I mean, Asha, I mean, what do you want to say something? I mistake any sign, sorry. Okay. So, Adrit is jumping up slowly. No, 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 no. Don't take <laughs> my position, Adrit. Please. I got there work by working hard. Because of hard work. Please. Don't take away that position. Please, end the quiz. End the quiz. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, sir, Adrit. He is answering. <laughs> no, no, wait. Who is this Shri? Shri is jumping. <laughs> tata, tata. Kirtana, please end the quiz. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> Please end the quiz. I need and we want the quiz to be ended. Please. Please. Adrit is taking time, but he can't No way. We are on the street. I don't know. But at least I'm in second, I'm happy. At least I'm in the leaderboard. Satyaki is, is, is attempting twice. So, I think you can end it twice. This is okay. the second attempt. I think we can end it. So, uh, 7,300. Great. Whoever is three. <laughs> the last one she got. The last one was wrong. So, three Avinash and Anish. Well done, well done. Nice presentation and nice quiz. Thank you. It is like a nice presentation. Elame space some of the topic to get the green to the topic of the nice one. Anyway, stars students, whatever she presented has a lot of value, uh, a lot of thought, a lot of emotions into it. So let's start finding solutions. How to stop Farmers' uh, sufferings. Jaku. Yeah. Jaku. See, if Kirtana, hey, Naman, stop, stop making text memes, okay? Don't do that, you're irritating. Okay, so That's since Kirtana presented the problem, I want, uh, I want her to present the solutions. If she presents the problem, I'm sure she'll have a solution to it as well. Others can also present their solution, but her solution should have more importance than others. But she's presenting the problem statement. So she should also present a solution as well. Yes, yes. I know, Naman, I know that. I'm, I'm not taking that seriously, okay? Don't worry. So yes, Kirtana can find a solution. Yeah, yeah I can find the utmost importance. So yeah, you have to do it with utmost importance. Think of it as the future of farmers. Farmers' future. What's going to happen to farmers? Just think of them. Then you make the solution. Then you'll understand. Then it will be easier for you to think. And then you can easily make a creative solution and a cost-effective solution, which can prevent them from suicide. Okay. Nice. Well done. All of you go unmute. Let's give one use round of applause for amazing presentation, Akka. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you for the quiz. Let's welcome our next presenter.
so her first presentation made lot of noise even i put it separately i got few calls from uh, uh, people asking who is this uh, student doing this kind of topic so her first presentation on tamilian take on uh, space science so today sanjana is back with a new topic complex asteroids and she is from good shepherd matriculation higher secondary school grade 11 one of the scientist uh, researchers who has this potential to change future of space industry the sanjana please the stage is all yours thank you sir can i screen share is my screen visible yes so hi all i'm sanjana uh, so today i like to present on the topic uh, C complex asteroids. That is nothing but C complex asteroids. Uh, to start with the basic types, there are uh, uh, like there are many types of asteroids, but the three basic types are the C type, S type, and the M type. Uh, the composition. The C types are made up of uh, chondrite asteroids. They are also known as the chondrite asteroids. The chondrites are nothing but uh, the primitive asteroids which have been which have been uh, you know from the beginning that is the, these types of asteroids have been from the big bang so they've been in the solar system for a very long time and the uh, speciality of these chondrite asteroids is that uh, they never get modified they never get you know transformed into another thing uh, either by melting or differentiation from the parent body they're just the same uh, even during the space weathering space weathering is nothing nothing but the si similar weathering that happens in the earth Uh, when there is pollution or when there is exposure to uh, greater temperature, the splitting of splitting up of things happens. So even after that, they seem to be the same. So that is known as the chondrites. And then the S type is stony, and the M type is a metallic, which is made up of nickel ion. And yeah. Uh, to talk about the car elements, the carbonaceous asteroids, nothing but the C type asteroids, are uh, grayish in color, and most of them include like. uh they 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 are like they form around like 75 percentage of the known asteroids they probably consist of clay stony silicate rock rocks and inhibit the main belt of the region the silicaceous asteroids are uh, around like 17 percentage of the known asteroids they and occupy the inner belt the metallic asteroids uh, they account the rest of the percentage and they they can be found in the inner belt uh, so i've given like few synopsis of the c complex asteroid that is a c type asteroid the most c complex asteroids they have albedo value is less than 0.1 but there are few exceptional cases where the albedo value is uh, you know exceeds more than 0.1 i'll be dealing it with later uh, so this albedo value is nothing but uh, it's a ratio of reflection by incidence for example let's take a prism when a ray of light is being passed through it it eventually reflects so when the when when the ratio is being taken from reflection by incident it, the it just says how reflective that surface is in order to find the reflective surface of a particular object uh, albedo values are being found out uh, these are the carbonaceous uh, they, they are carbonaceous a large amount of carbon and since they are far away from the earth they have been the least affected or the least uh, altered by heat It is also been said. It is also been said that uh, since most of them haven't reached the temperature of 50 degree Celsius, uh, they might have water content in them, around like 22 percent of water content, and their albedo value is very less just because they have carbon in them in a larger in a larger quantity. Uh, to tell you about the carbon, carbon is a great absorber. It absorbs things easily and it doesn't reflect that that much. So that's the reason why they have the albedo value less. And then the large complex asteroid. Is uh, 10 Hygeia having diameter of 434 kilometer, and they actually come in different sizes from 1 kilometer to 945, 945 kilometer. That's the maximum of 1.5. And the total mass of all these known asteroids constitutes around like 4 percentage of the Moon's mass. That is only the C complex. Okay, that is the C type. Some are merely piles of rubble held together by gravity. Most of them aren't massive enough, and so uh, and they mostly resemble. You know the they mostly resemble that of a potato, and the one more thing that I would say is based on the composition they have been differentiated into different categories as I said S type, C type, M type. Based on their uh, time period they have been different differentiated into different families. 
like Datura family, Vetera family, versatile family. Those are the different families which have been differentiated on the basis of uh, the time period. Uh, most of them are located in the outer edge, of, outer edge of the famous asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. The location is at 3.5 astronomical unit away from the sun. The average distance between the asteroids is just, it's around like 1 million kilometers. So research can be done easily on asteroids, but just that we need to reach those asteroid belts. And one more thing is that the, it is also being said that the meteorites that we get to see in the Earth is the remains of uh, the asteroids, that is the sea co complex asteroid in specific. And the sea complex uh, asteroids, they have the capacity to absorb ultraviolet rays. So when they absorb the ultraviolet rays, the wavelength is very less. So when the wavelength is very less, they are featureless. So that is the reason why behind it's finding out, that's the reason why finding out them is quite hard. And uh, as I said, uh, there are a like few exceptional cases such as the nature of uh, uh, bright sea complex. There are some high albedo uh, bright sea complex which exceeds the albedo value 0 0.1. To reveal the nature or to find out the reason behind the brightness, a project was conducted and uh, because of that many many of the subcategories were found such as the PC, CH type and uh, the they were given a name as Demosia type asteroids and uh, the, uh, the reason was the, uh, the reason behind the brightness was they contain a lot of minerals and uh, materials in them. Each mineral has different wavelength and frequency. Since they have different wavelength and frequency, they tend to emit different kinds of light. So they are like quite bright compa compared to the other uh, asteroids. Can I voice this in the thing? <laughs> Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. You are audible, but uh, come here. Okay. okay. Uh, comparison of the asteroid uh, between the normal, the S type and then the C type, the comparison proved that uh, the salt also may be, may, uh, might be the reason behind their uh, brightness, that is, in the bright sea complex. They might have salt content in them. So these uh, bright sea complex and the sea complex families were likely caused by impact heating, as I said, when they're exposed to uh, high here, when they're exposed to high, when they're exposed to high temperature, they tend to give out wavelengths. They tend to give, they give, tend to give out spectrums. So that is the reason behind the brightness. And they, this bright sea complex asteroid, they do not belong to any family, but they kind of belong to an, in a family in a very indirect way. That is, they get uh, you know metamorphosed into other things. That is the carbonaceous, carbonaceous chondrites. CV, uh, CK chondrites or any uh, instead chondrites and A chondrites. So that's it. Hope you all like my presentation. And, yeah. <laughs> okay. I think Ranadi presented on asteroid mining, Sandhina on complex asteroids. If you both have any ideas about future asteroid mining or asteroid letter, sir. Device and cards, you know, the data. <laughs> it's like related topics. Nice. Well done, Sanjana. Anyone have any doubts? Oh, Adrit. Yes, Adrit, you can unmute it. Sir, last. Sorry, sorry. I don't have a doubt. Sorry, sorry. I'm just Okay. Okay. Hi, Nash. Yeah, I'm The hand was Oh, sorry, I forgot. But yeah, the presentation was amazing. Nice. Amazing presentation, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, have any questions? Any doubts? Okay, any questions? No, I don't have this. I didn't have time. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, this has become like part of why just was like future scientists. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? 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 So students, you can unmute yourself. Let's see a new world of Great presentation, super. Thank you all. And all of you, just put your feedbacks in our YouTube live feed so that it's visible when we look back after like maybe 
கொஞ்ச நாள் கழிச்சு பின்னாடி பாக்குறப்போ தெரியும் தேங்க்யூ சாஞ்சனா தேங்க்யூ சோ மச் லெட்ஸ் வெல்கம் நெக்ஸ்ட் பிரசன்ட் வேரிசி எங்கடா நம்ம நான் காணும் அவன் அவர் ஈஸியா ஓகே நமன் நாய்டக் சாங்கு யூ கேன் அன்மியூட் யுவர் செல்ஃப் நமன் ஐயா எஸ் ஜக்கு ஓகே ஓகே சோ லெட் மீ இன்ட்ரோ듀ஸ் நமன் சோ சோ நமன் இஸ் from grade 5 akya school btm and he is presenting as a series the the planets of the solar system and beyond as a not a single presentation this is like seventh part so part number 7 so it means he already presented six times before on this topic it means 6 and 6 into some 22 25 minutes so he almost did 3 4 hours of research content it means look at this child he spent hours and hours of research studying all this i never did this in my school all i know is uh, come to school, uh, come out come from school go to play cricket then sleep that's all okay now one please uh, start uh, yeah please start Let's thank start. you jago for the introduction so All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Naman. Today I'll be presenting on Plants of the Super System and Beyond, Part 7. By Naman, a.k.a. me, from my space now. So, yeah, let's begin. So, I'm not even going to talk about the note because basically I've just done this a lot of times. So, I don't necessarily need to say it. you can just see it yourself and yeah as jag explained it's a series where i talk about plants of the solar system and further and further to the exo plan rules while i present which is where i'm going to be followed the entire time no interruptions question at the end of the presentation interactions are clearly allowed raise your hand to interact feedback and suggestions at the end sit back and relax while i present to a copy of this content and now the most exciting part of this presentation what is the first exoplanet well before the slide moves on i want to see who can guess what the exoplanet is anyone can raise hands and answer the chat box is open for answers yes. what is the first exoplanet No doubt. No, that's the same answer. Jupiter. Um, Jupiter. I'm not sure about that. Not sure. Okay. Others? Both the Pulsar. PSR 1257 plus 12. Okay. That is I know Pulsar bike. <laughs> okay. What else? Pulsar. Okay. Let's um, wait for a few more seconds. More answer. Which is the first exoplanet? I'm going to give twenty more seconds because yes, sir. One to five sound plus twelve. I think Google is suppose, doing its job. I suppose they're searching up on Google. Okay. Okay. Bye. It is. Let, let it go. Let it go. Let the answer be Proxima Centauri B. The first exoplanet is Proxima Centauri B. again it's an exoplanet part of the star proxima centauri which we all know i'm pretty sure so what kind of exoplanet is proxima centauri proxima centauri b also called proxima b or alpha centauri cb is an exoplanet orbiting in the habitable zone second habitable zone of the red dwarf star proxima centauri as i said which is the closest star to the sun and part of a triple star system it's approximately 1.28 parsecs or 4.2 light years or in 1000 1030 kilometers from earth in the constellation centaurus making it and proxima proxima c the 
closest known exoplanet of the solar system. Proxima Centauri b orbits the star at a distance of roughly 0 0.05 or basically 7.5 million miles or 7.5 million kilometers or 4.6 million miles with an orbital period of approximately 11.2 Earth days. It has an estimated mass of at least 1.2 times that of Earth. So it's basically almost the same size of Earth. So it is subject to stellar wind pressures of more than 2,000 times those of Earth's solar wind. So the wind pressure is extremely high. You're going to get blown off and no wonder. And its habitability has not yet been definitely established. The planet's discovery was announced in August 2016. It was found using the radial velocity method, where periodic Doppler shifts to the parent star spectral line suggests an orbiting object. I'm going to talk about the method later on. From these readings, the parent star radial velocity relative to Earth's Earth is varying with an amplitude of about 1.4 meters or 4.5 feet per second, according to Guillermo Aguilanda Escude. Spanish astronomer. Um, the planet's proximity to Earth offers an opportunity for robotic space exploration with the Starshot project, or at least in the coming centuries. And the next thing that is almost and is discussed in every single, um, let's say, PPT of the series, can the planet or the exoplanet itself be colonized. Well, just because it's an exoplanet, I'm going to see if any guesses can happen. Okay, Vignesh has raised his hand. Okay. Yes, Vignesh. What is your question? <laughs> can you please tell me? What? He's, he's asking you to repeat the question. Um, so basically, just because it's an exoplanet, do you think it can be colonized? So exoplanet can be colonized. Yes, I'm not sure you can unmute this. Especially in this proximal Yeah. Naman, is your presentation only, uh, does your presentation contain only seven slides? No, it's a bit more than that. Oh, wait. No, because I'm only able to view seven slides. Just a minute. Let me download it another time. I'm going to stop sharing for now. Just give me a minute. Okay. Present it again. Okay. Now I can continue your question. So, how many of you think Proxima Century can be colonized? Or can be made into a habitable? No. Yeah. Okay, there's an uh, that we can be in the future. Yeah. Naman, I clicked every single document I have downloaded. Yours, but I'm only able to use seven pages. Nam Naman Naman, one minute. Uh, you asked not can be colonized or not colonized. It can be colonized because exoplanet, none other satellite had been visited that planet, but Humans are just wondering. Also, in Navaisha itself, so many presented about exoplanets like Rakshansa, I presented the topic, um, Kepler 22b, and you also spoke about the topic. But they are proving that life is there in exoplanet. But the non satellite that visited the planet, but they are uh, imagining that it can be colonized. Uh, we we cannot we are taking much effort to go to Mars like mock C C O two much facilities like building house so in in a, in exoplanet there might be easier and there is life there but they are telling it can be colonized okay so yeah can be colonized that is a but very, depends very on the future answer. depends on future I think in future. Humans will be uh, technically good enough to uh, produce the needed uh, heat, needed uh, gravity, 
they can actually Aku, produce the artificial life i got i just asked google now there is in in the exoplanet there is gravity is the main problem but we need to do the correct thing for that only and in mars itself i got one new thing this can be an exoplanet big in earth the gravity is high so how to blood reaches brain so from a heart will pump and a blood will reach the brain so so in uh, uh, there is 9.8 minutes per second is the gravity but in kepler 22b uh, sorry exoplanet there is less gravity so from here to here it will goes and sometimes our brain may be burst Okay, but the, I think so. This is just my imagination. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, thirteen slides. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's the man. That's yeah, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Ignesh. Whatever you are telling is right. Right. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Let's continue. Okay. Well, well, well. Let's see if it can be colonized. Lady? Yes. Is this slide not moving? Like it's frozen. Lady, the slide is not moving. Nice. Let me check. I think it's AFK or something. Okay, let me share the screen then. Okay. Oh. Yes, you can continue. The next slide? Yeah, next slide. Okay. okay. Sorry for the inconvenience. Now we're good. So can it be colonized? Apparently, the habitability of Proxima Centauri B has not been established, as I said. But the planet is subject to stellar wind pressures of more than 2,000 times those experienced by Earth the solar wind. Absent a magnetic field, so that means it doesn't have a magnetic field, this radiation and the stellar winds would likely blow any atmosphere away. Leaving the subsurface as the only potentially habitable location on the location on that planet. The exoplanet is orbiting within the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri, the region where we, where with the correct planetary conditions and atmospheric pressures, liquid water may exist on the surface of the planet. The host star, about an eighth of the mass of the sun. As a habitable zone between around 0 0.0423 or 0.0206 astronomical units. In October 2016, researchers at France's RNS, NRS, sorry, research institute stated that there is a considerable chance of the planet harboring surface ocean and having a thin atmosphere. However, unless the planet transits in front of its star from the perspective of Earth, it is difficult to test this hypothesis. So yes, we can colonize it. There's a lot in store for it. But we aren't sure yet whether it can be. So Vignesh, I'll give that to you for answer. And surprisingly, it doesn't have any more. This actually gave me a bit of a letdown, but there's more. Okay. So quiz time it's a very tiny one, but there's more ahead. So what is Proxima Centauri B? You can raise your hand or type in the chat. What is Proxima Centauri B? Okay. Um, uh, Proxima Centauri B also. Pro as... Proxima Centauri B is exoplanet. Okay, chill. One by one. Yeah, the Proxima Centauri B is an exoplanet. And uh, it is also called uh, Proxima B. 
I think it's century B. I'm not sure. No. Or, uh, or Alpha Centauri C. Yeah, Alpha Centauri C. And uh, it uh, rotates around the red draft uh, star. Uh, uh, what is that name? Proxima Centauri. And uh, the, the star is also the closest uh, like the closest star uh, beyond the sun, except the sun, beyond the sun. What else? Proxima Centauri, the star Proxima Centauri is closest yeah, to the sun, right. but the it is actually Proxima Centauri B is basically an exoplanet orbiting. Yeah. Uh, Naman, shall I answer the second question? Yep. Good to go. Can uh, exoplanet be colonized? So that's the second question. The answer is yes. Naman, am I correct? Yeah, you're correct. But it isn't it isn't confirmed yet since you said um it's not. But um, but exposed. I'm telling you none satellite or none human had been visited the planet, but in future they may visit and it can be colonized. But some people are imagining and saying that it there is life in exoplanets, so it can be colonized. And exoplanet uh, is founded by observatory, I think. So because none of the satellite had not been visited, it's founded by ab Mm. Yeah, they go have finished seed. Huh? Yeah, maybe in future exoplanets can be colonized. So for now it is uh, colonized and as I said, subsurface is the only part where it is habitable and we can colonize it. And it also has chances of good water or ocean. So now the third question. Does it have any moon? Simple answer. Yep. No, it will not have moon. Moons. Next question. Shall I answer? No, let someone else answer. You'll answer it. I recommend them. Naman, shall I answer? Next question. Um, let's see if anyone else answers. answers. If not, then I'll give it to you for an each probably. Anyone else? Which method was used to discover Proxima Century B? Shall I now answer, Naman? Okay, yeah, you can. So the answer is, it's uh, find it by observatory, observatory, because observatory and sometimes it can be seen by telescope, because especially a satellite had not visited an uh, exoplanet. You can say any of them, Kepler no. 22b, anything. Know. It's founded by, I think, so, observatory or telescope. Both of them may have been seen. Okay. Okay, but no, it's not the answer. It's actually Doppler spectroscopy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is Doppler spectroscopy? I'll explain it. I'll explain it. Don't worry about it. Rekti. I can move to the next slide. Doppler spectroscopy. We discussed this topic once. How many of you remember? The exoplanets. How to find exoplanets. Yes, yes. Now I'm going to continue. Okay, so Doppler spectroscopy. So I'm just going to give a brief note on what is it because I don't want to go too deep because this is based on planets, but I'm just going to give a brief one how what basically Proxima Centauri and other exoplanets. So what is Doppler spectroscopy? Doppler spectroscopy, also known as the radial velocity. You remember I said that, then yeah, you know this other name. Or colloquially, the wobble method is an indirect method for finding extrasolar planets or exoplanets and brown dwarfs from radial velocity measurements via observation of Doppler shifts in the spectrum of the planet's parent star. Doppler 880 extrasolar planets or exoplanets, or 21% of the total, were discovered using Doppler spectroscopy as of February 2020. So I'm pretty sure there's a lot more since, yeah, probably over a thousand would be covered. 
and that's the end of the presentation thank you any doubts please do share your feedback and suggestions it's very professional today is very it's nice very nice nicely done so students you have any doubts you can ask your doubts in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask your questions and this is uh, i think i'm going to put uh, i'm going to separate all naman's videos and put it as a separate series because when we look at it as a series it, it makes much more sense nice taxi again unmute yourself yeah jabu so naman especially i i would like to tell you something can you show the image of doppler spectral coffee because i have not seen that wait i will share it uh, we already discussed today. and i have uh, another one doubt how it can be found because i have not seen the Oh, okay. I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's only I'm asking. So this topic we discussed in I think uh, set five or set six. I'm uh, not sure. Mm, but yeah, we discussed I think about set six or five. Yeah. So how to find exoplanets? How to find exoplanets? So if you go, if you search this, it will take you to a page, NASA's page. Ah, uh, five ways to find exoplanet. Yeah, it's showing radial velocity. Yeah, Jago, I have shared the, I have found this website. It will give you so five this, ways. This is the method. Mm -hmm. The radial velocity. Eight hundred seventy-eight. Yeah. Still the same, I think. Yeah. So this is the method. Radial so velocity. When the planet moves away from the it's like sound waves so when it comes towards the thing it become the red shift and blue shift so this is the trick yeah uh, jagu but for example if an ambulance comes close to you you hear the sound of the ambulance very fast like yeah, the, the movement like uh, creates the sound wave that yeah, jagu jagu i think so i told i already present this um, uh, a month ago this topic my at last live stream i told that uh, uh, it if a uh, uh, frequency type called show ro re deri okay that frequency can can be come on to 20 hertz to 200 hertz and we can hear that but this is in a different It's frequency 20, and frequency uh, yeah so jago what type of frequency is this jago this is not frequency right? this is called the red shift and the blue shift the change in color is called red shift so when a planet is moving towards you so or when it's moving away yeah so jago yeah. why i am asking frequency is because humans can hear but this sound humans cannot hear so what type of frequency and that is not sound is rather is light this is based on light that's why they oh. call it as uh, uh, doppler spectroscopy spectroscopy in the sense it's based on light Okay, because why I thought that down analog signal is coming, so I thought that it may be on this as well. That's light, light. I'm pretty sure some of you were confused because I told the um, other yeah. name for it. So Students so want to explore more about the uh, how to find exoplanets. You can uh, use this link. Okay, Jago. Okay, Jago. But how do you share the link? How yeah. how did it been discovered, Jago? This, you can use telescopes for this. So telescopes okay. will have various sensors. Yeah, the very first one. Hmm. Done. One minute, Jago. I'm just checking the group. Okay. I I'll put in chat box. Okay, Jago. Thank you, Jago. Okay. Sir, put it in YouTube live too. Okay, I will put it. Okay, now that's Naman for you. That's some brilliant presentation uh, which had lot of interaction, lot of questions. So this is what uh, needed. And uh, let's all of you go unmute. Let's give a huge round of applause for Naman, Naman, Naikak Sahu. That's his uh, series seventh. Uh, well done, well done. Amazing presentation. Amazing presentation. Thank you, everyone. Okay, now let's welcome our final presenter of the day, chapter number fifteen. 
let me introduce bhairavi uh, i have uh, mentioned about bhairavi several times as uh, again as i'm uh, i'm actually proud to to mention so she has already completed her first book on moon creators and which is about to publish very soon and we are following very closely as well yeah good and that news yeah, will be up publisher have you given it to which publisher publisher uh what's the name of the publisher by the way nolus publication nolus nolus sorry name nolus name nolus okay so that's uh, one of my friend uh, he uh, he leads the company so we had uh, so he he yeah, actually you published it you published it we yeah it's almost almost we yeah, just got uh, the first spelling. copy in our yeah. yeah, go uh, Spell Nulas. Okay. Nulas. Okay. So that she is from grade five, from Sri Vatsa Vishwanathan Vivek, Sri Vatsa Vishwanathan Vivek Ananda Vidyalaya, and grade five by Ravi Ananda. Her topic is space colonizing, reasons, goals, and methods, and she is from this company Target Space. Sir, can you see my presentation? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. So I think she is grade six. Oh, now become grade six. Fine, grade six. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Hello, everyone. I'm Parvi, and today I'm going to present about space colonizing, reasons, goals, and methods. So today's contents are introduction, reasons for colonizing, goals of colonizing, and methods to colonize. Number one, introduction. Colonization means the action or the process of settling among and establishing control over the indigenous people of an area. In this presentation, we'll understand the reasons, goals, and methods to colonize. Number two, reasons for colonizing. Colonizing space is really important. If it went for colonizing space, the human race would not survive. Numerous challenges will be faced. Humans will face overpopulation in the not too distant future, which would cause lack of resources, starvation, poverty, and thirst. Diseases will havoc. Pollution will destroy the environment, and World War Three can become a nuclear war, and numerous people will have health issues. Number three, goals of colonizing. The main goal of colonizing into space is survival of human civilization. The primary argument calling for space colonization is the long-term survival of human civilization and terrestrial life. By developing alternative locations of Earth, the planet species, including humans, could live on in the event of natural or human-made disasters. On our own planet. So the last topic of the day is methods to colonize. I have a video for this. I'll play it. Okay. projects it's all about mankind's greatest construction feats you can check it out through a link in the description below more on that in a bit many prominent scientists and technologists such as stephen hawking carl sagan and elon musk have expressed confidence that humans will be able to colonize the universe some believe that unless humanity is wiped out beforehand colonizing the universe is inevitable of course we have yet to set foot on mars so we probably are a long way off of colonizing the galaxy or even the universe but if we were to try it well how would we go about it 
Number 10. Spacecrafts The first way we can colonize space is the same way humans have been colonizing the Earth for thousands of years, simply packing up and moving there. Unfortunately, the closest habitable planet is believed to be about 14 light years away, which is approximately 82 trillion miles. It's not exactly like we can rent a U-Haul and offer some people beer and pizza to help us get there. But if we somehow master interstellar space travel, our best bet would be to send one large colony for a variety of reasons. If that's the case, well, how many people would we need? For example, in 2026, Mars One plans on sending 100 people to start colonizing Mars. However, to colonize a planet that is further away, for instance, say it would take 150 years to travel there, according to anthropologist Cameron Smith at Portland State University, we would need to send at least 20,000 people, with an ideal amount actually being 40,000. Also, of the 40,000 people, at least 23,000 need to be men and women of reproductive age. Sending such a large group of people would help the population maintain good health because this will offset the effects of eventual inbreeding and a lack of genetic diversity. Also, there will be changes in demographics throughout the journey, and this also accounts for one catastrophe that could hurt the population. Number 9. Cyborgs The idea of upgrading our weak Earth-loving body parts with robotics was first proposed in 1960 by a NASA scientist named Manfred Kleins, who literally coined the term cyborgs. Kleins theorized that a human and robotic interface invites man to take an active part in his own biological evolution. Kleins believed that these upgrades could make humans more physically able to explore space, and with a few upgrades and modifications, we would be able to adapt to any extraterrestrial conditions. This theory was taken to the extreme by Kevin Warwick, a cybernetics expert at the University of Reading. He thinks we could colonize space by simply removing human brains and implanting them in androids that can survive on multiple planets. Or we could just build specialized androids for those planets. While we have made a lot of headway in androids, androids and robot prosthetics over the years, we have still got a long way to go before our bodies could be upgraded to spacefaring vessels. And that's not even mentioning implanting our brains into robots. Number 8. Artificial Intelligence As we mentioned in the introduction, humans have yet to send a person to Mars. So you might be thinking, well, how are we going to colonize even the next solar system, which is 4.24 light years away, if we haven't set foot on our closest neighbor? And it's an exciting point. In fact, some scientists believe that the task is too great for humans, and this may be something that we will rely on artificial intelligence to do. There are two major ways that AI could help in the colonization of space. The first is that artificial intelligence may be smarter than humans and will unlock the secrets to interstellar travel. Or potentially something much more far out, like how to use wormholes. That is, providing AI doesn't kill us before it solves all of our space colonization problems. The second way is that we could develop intelligent beings that would essentially pave the way for us. They would be programmed to seek out habitable planets and then build an intergalactic highway way for humans. Then it's just a matter of sending the proper cargo, such as… Number 7. Genetically Engineered Embryos We keep mentioning that humans are terrible for space travel because that's one of our biggest problems with trying to colonize space. For example, people going to Mars for 18 to 30 months will have a higher risk of cancer, tissue degradation, bone density loss, and brain damage, among other health problems. In fact, there are some people who are convinced that the only way humans could colonize a new planet would be if genetically modified humans were the first generation of residents. The embryos would be modified to better survive on the alien planet. Then it would just be a matter of shipping the embryos to the new planet. There they could be grown or even printed using a biological 3D printer. Also, by sending embryos, it avoids humans sitting on a spacecraft for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Number 6. Genetically Modified Humans Earlier, we talked about our distance from any habitable planets. The closest such planet is 14 light years away, while the closest star, Alpha Centauri, is about 4.24 light years away. This means that if people want to travel to our closest neighbors and start colonizing them, there will need to be some outstanding advancement in technology when it comes to interstellar travel. From there, we will have to figure out the best way to transport humans. One possible way actually being developed by NASA is deep hibernation technology similar to Aliens and Prometheus. However, hibernation isn't suspended animation, so it doesn't do something as radical as stopping the aging process. Thus, having someone sleep their whole life away on a ship isn't exactly much help in the colonization effort. The solution would be to simply genetically engineer Earthlings that either don't age or age very slowly. This type of technology supposedly isn't too far off either. Some researchers believe that the first person to live to the age of 1000 is alive today. It's possibly Keith Richards. If humans were genetically modified to live longer, they might be better working on the journey instead of sleeping. This would eliminate the need for deep hibernation, which would save energy. 
However, if that were the case, probably more genetic modification would be needed. They would need to genetically modify the colonizers' brains by eliminating things like loneliness and boredom. This would enable them to pilot the ship for hundreds of years without being mentally destroyed. Once humans are better at traveling longer distances, we will be better at reaching oases throughout the universe and colonizing the planets that are habitable to humans. And just before we get into the top five today, I do want to mention a new channel that I'm working on called Mega Projects. It's a channel all about mankind's greatest achievements, where I take a deep look at incredible buildings, projects, structures, and more. Whether it's the world's most impressive sky, so if you think it could be below, and let's get back to it. Number five evolution. An interesting theory about space colonization is that humans may just evolve and become more physically suited at traversing the universe. Notably, it's believed that the first people to settle on Mars will see drastic changes in their bodies in their lifetime as they adjust to their life there. If they have children, the changes will be much more pronounced. As generations go on, their bodies and physiology will change even more. Eventually, the Martians will become an offshoot of the human tree. Evidence to back up this theory is the dispersion of humans throughout history. Any time humans expanded to new areas of the Earth, humankind became more diverse. When people move to a different planet, where many things like gravity are completely foreign, changes will be even more pronounced than humans moving to different areas on Earth. Eventually, this evolution will continue, and humankind's offshoots will just get better at space travel than living on other planets. Number 4. Self-replicating probes In the late 1940s, Hungarian mathematician John von Neumann developed plans for self-replicating robots called universal conductors. The idea behind it was that tiny robots would self-replicate exponentially. Two robots would build four, four would build eight, and so on. While it would start off slow, eventually millions of robots would be constructing billions of robots. Then, in half a million years, there would be probes reaching all four corners of the Milky Way. While Newman didn't develop the idea for space exploration, but others have used his probes in their plans for hypothetical ways to colonize space. Physicist Michio Kaku says that the probes are the most mathematically efficient method to explore space. How they work is that the robots would seek out dead moons throughout the galaxy, then set up factories to build other robots at a molecular level. They'd use naturally occurring deposits like nickel and iron. From there, what we could do with robots everywhere in the galaxy is near limitless, as we'll see in the next entry. But unfortunately, universal conductors are a little way off. We still need to develop the technology for the probes. This includes nanotechnology and artificial intelligence that capable of reproducing on the levels needed to take over the galaxy. Number 3. Dyson Spheres Possibly the closest real-life plan for building a Death Star-type structure is the Dyson Sphere. And no, it wasn't designed by the same guy who makes really expensive vacuum cleaners. Instead, the sphere was designed as a thought experiment by physicist and astronomer Freeman J. Dyson. He was trying to figure out a way to look for advanced alien life in the universe. Dyson believed that really advanced alien civilizations would have mastery over collecting energy in their galaxy and would have built an energy-catching sphere over a star to maximize collection of energy. This, in turn, would produce infrared radiation, so naturally, Dyson suggested looking for high levels of infrared radiation. It's true the sphere was designed as a hypothetical way to look for advanced life, but a study from Oxford University's Future of Humanity Institute believes we could create Dyson spheres using something like von Neumann's self-replicating robots. This would enable us to harness the power of stars throughout space, giving us the energy needed to colonize the universe. Number 2. Microorganisms Terraforming The problem with humans moving to another planet is that many of our closest ones are uninhabitable. For example, Mars is too cold and dry. One way that we could change that is through terraforming, which literally means Earth shaping. Researchers also believe that they know how to do it. When it comes to terraforming Mars, we would need to select microorganisms that consume natural resources that are found there. This would have a twofold effect on the planet. The first is that it would transform the soil, meaning vegetation would be possible, which would lead to more oxygen. Second, Secondly, the microorganisms would also pump gas out into the air. This would increase the thickness of the atmosphere around Mars, which would make the planet warmer. Water would also become more readily available. Gary King, a microbiologist at Louisiana State University, believes that humans will start terraforming Mars in less than 200 years. Number 1. Bacteria Do you know what the best-known data storage system is? Well, let me give you a clue. It makes up you and every living thing on Earth. That's right, it's DNA. One reason why DNA is such a great storage system is because a lot of complex information can be written onto it. As for how complex the information is, well, the human genome, which is everything that makes up humans, is about 750 megabytes worth of data. For comparison, the King James Bible is just about 5 megabytes of data. A few years ago, researchers at Harvard put 700 terabytes into a single gram of DNA. 
Secondly, DNA is incredibly durable. It can survive space and temperatures up to a thousand degrees and can also be cryogenically frozen. Finally, DNA is versatile. Researchers believe that in the next 20 years, we should have the technology to store human DNA in bacteria. Once we do that, we could send the bacteria to a distant planet along with microbes that could terraform the planet. The biggest challenge researchers see is programming instructions into the bacteria so that they will know what to do once they reach the destination. However, if they figure out how to include instructions on the bacteria, then the planet will be terraformed and eventually humans will evolve out of the bacteria. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumb. So thank you for listening. Hope you liked my presentation. Uh, I have a quiz. You can... This time. Quiz time. Open the, uh, open the share screen, no? It will have that. You can copy paste the link. Yeah, you can copy paste from the share screen and post yeah. it. Okay. Oh, by the way, you can copy it. Please share Anish Noel. Share. Wait for Okay, wait for Maybe share screen. On the share screen, we can copy. Yeah, she shared. Yeah, sir, can you see my screen? Yes, 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 yes. I think students, you can go on. Yeah, I'm going to join you. Where do you check the link? Okay, sir. Yeah, refresh it. Refresh. Jakku, it was loading. Oh, loading. Sir, just refresh it, sir. I think about six people have joined, sir. Okay, okay. Then yeah, fine. Don't start. Yeah, yeah. Don't start. Why do we six people have joined? And now people have joined. confusion akka one more time send the link akka okay i'm going to start the quiz okay just start Questions? Read out the question. Better read out the questions. So the first question is, um, which of these sentences are true? Colonizing for fun, colonizing for more space. And colonization, the second question is, colonization means large amount of people moving from one place to another, an official agreement intended to resolve a dispute or conflict. The third question is, Humans will face overpopulation in the not too distant future. It could cause lack of resources, starvation, poverty, and thirst. These are some dash for colonizing. Reasons, goals, methods, all of these or none of these. And the fourth question is, uh, do you think colonizing space is a good idea? And the fifth is not really a Quiz question. That's a bonus question. 
not bad, 73%. So, Norman is out of 5 out of 5. Oh my god, 10 point difference, Norman and Anish. Sanjay is jumping up. Nice. I think we can end it once. Uh, Everyone answers. I think we almost have 10 people. 10, okay. More than 10. I think there's two Sanjay. Two, two, two persons. Okay, I think I end it. Then Sanjay is trying for third, third time, huh? second time. Remove it, remove it. Okay. End it, you can end it. Okay, I'll end it. Let's see the later bro. Naman, Anis, and Sanjay. Nice. Well I done. That many people got full marks. Ranadip, the, I think that must be Ranadip. Yeah. Super. Well done, well question. done. This is the toughest question. This is the longest question. Okay. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Okay, sir. I'll exit. Well done by Ravi. Well done. So that's a nice presentation. Let's uh, all of you go on mute. Let's go on mute. Amazing presentation. Sir, one of the Sanjay was happy, sir. <laughs> Somebody named like me and came in, sir. Very good. Oh. Thank you, I'll mute that person. Okay. Awesome by Ravi. Remove the last person named Aros was Noda. Nice. So okay. thank you so much, uh, uh, researchers. Thank you so much for the audience for watching uh, this. Do support and uh, share. Uh, this should reach a lot of more people because uh, people you see here are not. A uh, yeah. lot of a lot of students. Uh, uh, I don't say wasting their time. They are not productive enough uh, like our children here. So this should reach uh, more people. This awareness should reach more people. This will create a lot of changes in the near future. Thank you so much. That's the uh, end of uh, chapter number 15 of Future Scientists Meet.